Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayek Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together God's people say with hearts of praise, Hallelujah. Now we're continuing our study in the book of Ephesians, and I trust that you are feeling bright and blessed in Jesus filled with his spirit and anticipating great things in your spiritual life that he can and will do for you. Now, of course, in order to receive those blessings, we must walk according to his will. And that's what we're going to see in the next couple of chapters here in the book of Ephesians, because they are so full of meat, meat that we need to chew on often and much. And so we're going to take our time as much as we can working through these next two chapters. But let's begin at Ephesians chapter 5. Did I say 4? Ephesians chapter 5, and let's begin at verse 1. Now, we are told to be followers of God. Now, think about that for a moment. If we were to define God, we would define God most likely as the Creator. We would define God as the Almighty One the invisible one, the intangible one. He who is a spirit does not have form or flesh. And if that is how we were to define God, then if we think about what God has done, there's been very little example really to follow. And it seems much of what he has done has been beyond the reality that we know. Now, of course, he guides men, he counsels men, he works with men, he exhorts, encourages, and motivates, and we certainly can do all those things as well. But when we're given the command here to be followers of God, if all we know of God is what he has done outside of our reality, then there's not much there to follow. But praise God, he entered into human flesh. And he left us an example. And so when it says, be ye followers of God, it's simply saying, be ye followers of God in flesh, who he was in the flesh. And that would be the man, Jesus of Nazareth. And he says, do this as children, as submitting yourself to the authority of your father. And as he is love, we know that from 1 John chapter 4, specifically verse 7 and 8, as God is love and his love has been manifested in Christ, who loved us, gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice for us, and this was a sweet-smelling aroma before God, as Christ walked in the love, that is the very essence of the Father, so too we are to walk in love. And if we walk in love, we will not walk in the deprived ways of mankind, in ways like fornication and uncleanness. These are sexual sins. And if you want a better understanding of those sins, you only need look at Leviticus chapter 18, I believe. Don't walk in covetousness. The Lord is my shepherd, Psalm 23. I shall not want. And don't let these things even be named once among you as become saints, as become followers of God. Don't let anyone say that you participate in such things, that you follow after these desires of the flesh. But let not your focus be only upon the larger members of your body, but don't forget the smallest yet most destructive member of your body, and that is your tongue. And so in verse 4, do not let filthiness, which simply means obscenity, do not let foolish talking, this would be the same as idle talking, when Jesus said you will be accounted for every idle word. Everything that we say should be producing fruit in the other person's life. And if not fruit, we should at least be planting seeds that can produce fruit. But foolish talking is simply idle chatter. And it may even be questioning things that there are no answers to. And you as well as I know that there are many questions 
that this side of heaven, we do not have answers to. We lean not to our own understanding, but we simply acknowledge God in all of our ways. He continues by saying, do not give yourself to jesting. And this would imply obscenity simply to get a laugh. And although laughter is good medicine for the soul, it depends on what we're laughing at, what we're laughing about. There certainly is good, honest humor. We can even laugh about and at the most simple of things. But we should never laugh at someone else. We should never laugh about a weakness, a deformity, or an attribute about another person. Because this does nothing to build them up. It only brings hurt and pain. And these things, we are told, are not convenient. They're not proper for us as God's people. So rather than use your tongue by doing these things, use your tongue to give thanks. For there is much that we have to give God thanks for. Even the most simple of things that are often overlooked. Buttons on your shirt. Shoelaces in your shoes. Toilet paper. A fork and a spoon. And certainly in the day and age that we live in, these are among the most minute things that we have. Not to mention a vehicle for transportation, a roof over our head, electricity during the winter months, and on and on the list goes. So rather than use your mouth for complaining, for obscenities, bringing pain to other people, use your mouth to give God thanks for the many things that he has blessed you with. For you need to realize in verse 5 that these are the traits of a follower of God. And anyone does not carry those traits, does not exhibit those characteristics. For instance, those who are whoremongers, those who are unclean or vile, those who are covetous and idolaters. These are examples of the people who will never have an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and in the kingdom of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Let no man trick you into believing that God accepts you as you are. No, friend. He compels you through his spirit that lives within you never to be satisfied, never to become complacent, but to push yourself into further degrees of holiness, into further levels of obedience making your number one priority pursuing his holiness, his godliness with great zeal and great effort. For if you do anything less, the wrath of God will be upon you because you will be a child of disobedience. You will be a child of rebellion. You will be found as rejecting the motivation that God gives you to pursue these things And his wrath will be upon you because of your complacency. And this is the characteristic of those who belong to the devil, not the children of God. And you need to draw a clear line of separation between you and them. Do not be partakers with them. You were once like them, but now you are light in the Lord. Therefore, walk as children of light." proving by your choices that you make in this life what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Rather, reprove them. In other words, he's saying, spend not the majority of your time with people who are living such evil lifestyles. And I can assure you, friend, if you do what the end of that verse says, you reprove them for their misdeeds, you won't be invited around very long anyway. So you won't have opportunity to spend much time with them because they're not going to want your reprovals. They're not going to want your judgments. They're not going to want you to hold them accountable. And the only reason you would be welcome among them is if you keep silent, if you don't speak up for God, if you don't speak the truth of his word. And by doing that, you simply become one of them. And so the warning here is very direct. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. So arise out of your sleep in verse 14. Quit living like the dead among the dead. Arise from the dead 
so that Christ's light that lives within you can shine forth and walk circumspectly or perfectly before the Lord, not as a fool, but as wise, because the days are evil. And there's going to come a time when you look back and you regret wasted days. You're going to regret missed opportunities. And even now you can look back and you can see missed opportunities. You can see wasted time. Learn from those experiences and make the most of every opportunity you have. Speak up when people take the Lord's name in vain. Speak up when people speak prejudice against another race or color or people. Speak up when someone is mocking someone or gossiping and talking behind someone's back. And definitely speak up if someone is practicing these things and they call themselves a Christian. Defend our Lord and his reputation. And as each day passing becomes more evil, this only gives you more opportunity to stand for truth, stand for the Lord, and speak up on his behalf. So be not like the pagans around you, and don't give yourself to drunkenness. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Don't find your joy in a bottle. Don't find your joy in a joint. Find your joy in the Spirit of the living God. And by doing so, you will find springing from your heart psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. You will find yourself singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. And you will be giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because your mind is upon the things of God, the kingdom of God, and not the things of this earth. You take seriously the call to holiness to a life of discipline and self-denial. And you're putting behind you the simple ways of the world that you one time lived in. And for that, you have much to sing about. You have much to rejoice about. You have much to give joy unto the Lord about. Because once you were blind, but praise God, now you see. Hallelujah, friends. What a privilege and honor and a joy it is to know that we are among the elect, that God chose us and pulled us out of darkness, and we now live in the beauty, the light, the holiness, the glory of the living Almighty God. And it is this that is our assurance. It is this that is our hope. And it is this that is our eternal inheritance. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to close there today, friends, and I trust that your journey will be blessed in Jesus today. I trust that your mind will be renewed by the Spirit of God and that you will seek Him with all your mind, soul, and strength, knowing that He is a rewarder, a great rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Now, as He wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.